Hello everyone, welcome to this webinar on message actions. I'm Manasa and I'll be your host for today. In this webinar, we'll be seeing what message actions are and how you can create selective message actions based on the message type. Before we get started, a bit of information. This webinar is being recorded and the recording will be shared with you shortly. If you have any questions during the webinar, please do not hesitate to ask them. You can ask questions through the chat bubble that you see on your screen. Our team will get back to you with the response as soon as possible. So let us take a quick look at the agenda for today. First up is an introduction of what message actions in Click are. We'll take a look at the default message actions and their purpose First, to understand how custom message actions are different from the default message actions. Followed by understanding the message map. Since we are performing an action on a message, we will get an idea about the message map and what attributes are passed when a message action is triggered. And then the message actions for different message types. Finally, a hands-on where we will be taking a look at how to perform selective actions based on message types. So with that, let's get started. A message action in click is just an action that you will perform on a message. They help in converting any messages shared in a conversation into an actionable item. Now click provides a list of default message actions. Let us take a look at the default actions that are available. So the default message actions that we have are reply, forward, fork henceforth, copy, set reminder and delete. And these message actions are applicable on the different types of messages as well. So there are three different types of messages. One is a message of the type text or it can be an attachment or it can be a link. So now that we have taken a look at the default message actions which Click has, let us take a look at how each of these actions work. I am in my Click home page and I have my chat window with Olivia here. So let's see where these message actions can be found. To access the message actions view, you need to hover over a message and click on the ellipsis icon that you see. You will find the reply, forward, copy message actions listed here and to perform an action, just click on the respective one. Now please do note that the delete message action is active for an hour from the time the message is sent. So that's how you can perform any default message action on click. Now moving on to what custom message actions are. A custom action is just a trigger or an action that can be custom built. They can be predefined according to each message type. Click custom message actions can be enabled based on the type of message that is if it is a text message or an attachment or a URL. When an action is performed on a message, the attributes that are passed are the message map. So let's take a look at the message map now. Generally, the message map will contain details about the message such as the message type, the sender details and the time of message. But the structure of this map varies a little bit corresponding to the type of message. For example, messages of the type text, the message map will contain the following attributes. Sender details, which is the user map, the time of message, the type of message, and the text key, which will contain the actual message string for which the action was triggered. For messages of the type attachments, apart from the usual sender info and the message information, the message map will also have a file object, which will contain details about the file size, the file type and the file name too. 
messages of the type url or link there isn't much of a difference between a message action performed on a url or a text message the message map will contain all the same attributes when performed on a text message the url will be available to the user as a value for the key text so let's try creating a simple message action now to understand the message map and the attributes to create your message action go to the integrations view in click by clicking on the integrations icon that you see on click stop navigation bar select message actions from the left hand pane and click on the create message action button give your message action name so i am going to name my message action sample action and give a hint which says understand the message map this hint will be shown as a tool tip when a user hovers over the particular action so if you scroll down you have an option to enable message actions based on the message type This will be enabled for all message types by default. You can go ahead and configure this for your message action based on what you're building. Right now, I'm going to leave this as such. So, let's just save the message action now. Click on save. This will take you to the deluge editor and you already see a sample piece of code generated here. Let's save this and try executing the message action now. In your test chat window, just hover over any text message and click on more to find the message action. Just select it and the message action will get executed to post a response in the same chat. We have the debug info of the message map here. Let's try to understand that a little bit. The message map here will give me details about the message on which we executed this trigger. I am clicking on the debug info to get a clear view of the message map. So here we have details about the sender, their ID, the message ID and the message text too. The type key indicates the type of message it is. So let's try executing the same action for an attachment now. So let's click on the message action to execute and we have the debug info here. We can see that the file object gives us details about the file shared in the chat. Now let's try executing the message action for attachments shared with a comment. The comment for the file is available as a value for the key comment here. So actions performed on a URL is quite similar to the actions performed for a text message. And that's how you can go about creating a message action and the message map and how to use it as well. Now let's see how we can create a message action for various message types. First up, we'll be seeing a message action for messages of the type text. One example here is add a bug. This message action will add the message as a bug that is as an issue in Zoho projects. Zoho projects is a project management software which helps teams manage their everyday tasks and timeline basically. It has an issues or a bugs module where you can add an issue and assign it to a user. Let us assume the scenario where an issue is posted in the issues channel and you can immediately update this issue in projects to keep track of it by using the add a bug message action. So I've got the sample code here. Let's take a look at the code. Since this message action is enabled for the message type text, we are confirming if the message type is text and upon confirmation, we get the message that we need to add as an issue and call the Zoho projects create deluge task. 
This task requires you to pass the project's ID, the portal ID and the connection name as well. You can refer the Zoho projects APIs for this. Now this task will create an issue in your project. The necessary parameter that needs to be passed is the title of the bug. So here the title of the bug will be the message itself. Let's quickly save the code and try executing the action now. I have a message here on which I'm going to perform this action. So once done, you can see that this message has been added as a bug in Zoho projects. Next up is an action for attachments. We'll be seeing how easily you can upload a file from click to Zoho Docs directly. For this, you will have to use the Upload File Zoho Docs API and the Invoke URL task with a connection with Zoho Docs. The Upload File API requires a list of mandatory parameters and the attachment to be uploaded as well. So these parameters are then added in a list and passed as a value for the files parameter in the invoke URL task. So let's just save the code and try executing the action. On successful uploading, the action returns a response with a link to view the uploaded file here. So now let's see how we can handle attachments which are shared in a chat with a comment. Let's take the example of the add bug message action itself. Now if you want to add an image shared in chat as a bug in projects, then you can share the image with a comment, use the comment as an attachment title and upload the image as a reference for the bug. If your attachment does not have a comment, then you can probably put in a message for the bug title saying added from issues channel in click. So I have the sample code here and that's exactly what we are doing. So we are taking the comment and adding it as the bug title and using this we are also passing the attachments to upload the file for this particular issue. So I'm just going ahead and saving the code now. Let's try executing this. I have an image here with a comment. Upon executing, the success response is shown and let us see if this has been added in projects as well. So you can see that the bug is added along with the image and the comment is the bug title. The last and final message action would be to try an action on a URL. So our example here is an optimized URL message action. For this, we will be using the Google URL Shortener API in the Invoke URL task and try to shorten any URL or link that is shared in the chat. So I have the code here with me. We are using the Invoke URL task to call the Google API and passing the URL in the parameters and with that let's just save the code and try executing this action. So I have a URL shared in chat and to get the short URL I am clicking the optimize URL message action and there we go we have the short URL ready. A quick recap on what this webinar is all about. We discussed about what message actions are, the default and the custom message actions that you can go ahead and build, the different message types which Click has and how you can configure custom actions based on message types. So we saw a few examples pertaining to each different message type and how you can create these examples as well. So that brings us to an end of this webinar on message actions. 
we hope this gave you an idea about how to go about creating such custom actionable entries on a message please note that the examples shared in this webinar are available in our resources page and we will be sharing this with you too if you have any questions feel free to ask them we will get back to you with the response as soon as possible you can contact us at this email id clicktricks@zohoclick.com if you like this webinar then find us on facebook and share or tweet to us and show us some love so thank you so much for joining me today next up is a webinar on schedulers and also how you can go about designing message cards on click So stay tuned for that